verse number 3 of Genesis 37. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was the son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, read these next three words with me here. They hated him. Let's jump down to verse number 20. We find where Joseph um, was doing what his father asked. Joseph was meant to kind of take care of his brethren and feed them. And we find there in verse number 18, And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. <clears throat> and they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, notice this next phrase here, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. Look at verse 33. And he knew it. And this is where they brought the coat back to Israel and he was looking at it. And this is what Israel said. And he knew it and said, It is my son's coat, an evil beast. Notice that. Hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt. Rent in peace. His father, we love you. Lord, I know, Lord, I, I, I don't want to get over, Lord, what you done last night. God, what a blessing that was. God, thank you for helping your servant. Lord, I really mean that. Well, I pray you'll help us this morning. Lord, I Lord went to sleep with this thought in my heart, woke up with it. And Lord, no doubt, Lord, it's, it's tough. Uh, but Lord, it's still the word of God. Yes. Lord, I pray you'll help us this morning, Lord, to grab a hold of this word and apply it to our hearts. Yes. And God, make us better Christians for you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 There in verse number 20 and verse number 33, uh, we see this word, evil beast. Yeah. Yeah. Evil beast. We... Uh, let me say this right here. This, this chapter is all about hate. Yeah. Uh, this chapter is not about hating an enemy. Right. This chapter, Brother Phil, is not about hating the world. Uh, this, this, this is about hating inside one's own family. Sure. And one thing that will kill a person is if you can't love your own brother. Yeah. Right. I know all of us this morning probably have no hate toward nobody. And then, um, you know, everybody's probably good here, but... Uh, where I'm from, Brother Jordan, there's a lot of hate inside of people's hearts. Somebody done me wrong, and I can't get over it. Let me say this. If God can shed his blood on the cross, get beat, whipped, spit upon, have his beard plucked out, and he said, Father, forgive him. The least thing we can do as a Christian is forgive. I want to notice here. Uh, verse number 4, the Bible says, And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him. Notice the scheme going on. There is the scheme of spite. Yeah. You'll find there in verse number 8, And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his word. The word hate means extreme dislike or disgust. I've got to be honest with you this morning, uh, if we're all honest, there's been people in our lives, Brother Jordan, if we've said the words, I hate you too. I'll never forget one, uh, one night at, at the Bessie Road, I had a bunch of teenagers, had a lock-in, uh, talking about a, a blessed thing, that's probably where some of these gray hairs come from, uh, having a lock-in, 30, 40 teenagers running around. Uh, one, of them, one of them girls there, uh, her mama came to pick her up, and I heard argue, and so I instantly went there, and I said, hey, what's going on? And that girl, she's probably 15, 16 years old. Preacher, she pointed her finger in her mama's face, said, I hate you. Wow. And that instantly just set off a Phillips time bomb in me. I got extremely mad. I could feel my blood pressure going up. And that girl walked out two double doors, started going at the gym, Brother Phil. I, I ran after her. I ran after her. I grabbed her. I said, girl, I said, let me tell you something. I said, there's a lot of things in this world that you can take back. But I said, if your mom was to die, you would have to go to the grave knowing the last words you said to her was, I hate you. Thank God she went right back in there and we had a little come to Jesus meeting with that family. And she got that thing right two weeks later. Her mom was in the hospital and died. One thing I don't ever want to Having my heart against somebody is hate. Have an opportunity to fix it and never get it right. One thing that I know that God does not like is hate. You don't got to turn there. There's a lot of scripture here I could read, but I want to read 
First uh, John chapter number two, uh, verse number eight. The Bible says, "Again, a new commandment I write unto you, which thing is true in Him and in you, because the darkness is past, and the true light now shineth. He that saith he is in the light and hateth his brother is in darkness even unto now." He that loveth his brother abideth in light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. But he that hateth his brother is in darkness, and walketh in darkness, and knoweth not whither he goeth, because that darkness hath blinded his eyes. First John chapter number 3, verse number 13, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death unto life, because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. How about that? Let me ask you this. How many murderers we got sitting in the building? Wow. Wow. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Sure. So what that's telling me, if you got hate in your heart, it's hard to say you love God and hate your brother. Yep. Amen. I know this is tough. I know this is tough. Just hang with me here. Right. Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. First John chapter 4 verse number 20. If a man say I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? John R. Rice said this, the man I wrote this down. When boiled down to its essence, unforgiveness is hatred. You know why you don't forgive that person that's done you wrong? Wow. You hate them. Wow. Uh, li listen, I'm not, this, I, I contemplated going to different routes this morning. Uh, but, but the scheme of spot here, his own family. Listen, it's totally different when you got co-workers that hate you. Sure, sure. It's different. Brother Doug, when I go to work and I got guys there that don't like me because I'm a preacher. And they, uh, man, they, they, they all the time just, just saying smart aleck comments to me. It's a whole different thing, Brother Jordan. When somebody at work hates me. Yeah. But when your own blood, yeah, right. when your own family mm. turns against you and hates you, man, it's, it's a different story. Sure. Yeah. Joseph here, his own brothers hated him. Mm. There's a scheme of spite. Notice verse number 18. The Bible says this, and when they saw him afar off. Yeah. And let me say something right here. There's the scheme of secrets. Mm. It's amazing they never talked about Joseph when Joseph was around. So, y'all shaking your head y'all know exactly what I'm talking about uh, those, those people that conspire against you uh, man, they say they love you in front of you y'all got some of them uh, preacher oh you're the best preacher in the world the moment they got an opportunity to turn their back they're direct opposite there's a scheme of secrets they, they conspired against him here he is verse number 18 he's walking up to them even before he came near unto them they conspired against him to slay him. Mm. May I remind you, not his friends, right. not the enemy, right. family. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I've got family in my own life that literally hate our gut. Wow. Wow. wow, the sole purpose of we've we've sold out for God. Dad's got an own brother this morning who hates his guts. Mm. Blood. Romans 2 verse number 16 in the day when God, when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel Ecclesiastes 12 verse number 14 for God shall bring every work into judgment yep. with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil mm -hmm. man we used to have this little saying growing up little secrets are no fun unless they're told to everyone uh, this is real deep theological stuff here if you can't say nothing nice don't say anything at all and I, so I'm guilty I'm guilty a lot of times brother Jordan of, uh, of judging people and saying things out of character I know I probably shouldn't have and man the Holy Ghost come by and say man you probably probably shouldn't do that cause it's easy to type against somebody on Facebook and send them text messages uh, I, I know y'all don't do that but it's a whole lot easier to talk about somebody on the phone than it is to them in person you're right it's hard to talk about somebody preacher when you're standing in front of their face. They were scheming, man, behind them. Man, I love this quote right here. I'd rather have an enemy who admits they hate me instead of a friend who secretly puts me down. You know one thing I'm learning in my life? I want to be around somebody that's real. 
there's the scheme of spite there's the scheme of secrets and I want to get to this and I, man it's, there's a, so much right here verse number 18 again look at there they conspired against him to slay him I want you to look at verse 17 and the man said they are departed hence for I heard them say let us go to Dothan and Joseph went unto his brethren notice that and found them verse number 20 come now therefore and let us there's verse 23 and it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped him verse 24 and they took him and cast him into a pit it, it's very very it blows my mind when I was studying this not one person by themselves could take Joseph down so you know what they had to do get others involved Amen. there's the scheme of spot there's a scheme of secrets but there's a scheme of several what I have learned in my life and what I have seen down through the years if one person starts hating somebody they always want to get other people involved you know what ruins a church man you leave church and man I know, I know y'all don't do this I know you don't but I've just heard it before and so I'll say it uh, I know up here is good and everything but uh, man down there at home preacher there people say hey I just didn't like what that preacher had to say you know what they do, Brother Jordan? They, before they even get to the parking lot, yeah, come on. they're texting somebody say, well, do you agree with what he said this morning? Yeah. It's amazing, Brother Phil. It blows my mind. Not one of these brothers took Joseph down by themselves. No. Right. Yeah. You know what they had to do? They had to involve the whole family yeah. to take down one man. Sure. And church, you know what? That, that, that bothers God. It's not only you can't handle it, but it's when you get somebody else involved. Man, one man said this, it takes your enemy and your friend working together to hurt you. Wow. The one to slander you and the other to get the news to you. Yeah. I'll say this, there's not many people, preacher, and you know this for a fact, there's not many people you can trust nowadays. Right. Amen. Uh, I've learned a long time ago, you got to be very, 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 very careful what you tell somebody. Psalms 41 verse number 7 All that hate me whisper together against me Against me do they devise my hurt Over 14 times there in just chapter 37 You'll find us, them, they uh, Verse 24 And they took him and cast him into the pit Verse 25 And they sat down to eat bread It couldn't just take one person They had to involve everybody uh, Psalm 71 verse number 10 For my enemies speak against me and they that lay, lay wait for my soul take counsel together. Yeah. I wrote this and I got it in the Bible over there in the pew. If you don't learn to walk alone, you won't walk very long. Yeah. One thing I have learned in my ministry is everybody that says they're for you <laughs> is not for you. Yeah, it's one of the hardest things me and Preacher was talking Friday about, uh, about a gentleman sometimes. Uh, people aren't who they say they are. And man, you'll get hurt, and uh, man, they'll talk about you. And man, just hurts you on purpose, not even on accident. They'll, they'll purposely out there to hurt you, and they're scheming together. Notice verse number twenty-three. Not only do they have a scheme, but one thing I've learned about people with hatred in their heart and unforgiveness is not only they like to scheme about you, they like to steal from you. Look at verse twenty-three. And it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat. You say, Jeff, why is that so significant? You'll find there in verse number three, now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children because he was a son of his old age and he made him a coat of many colors. You know what? They were jealous yeah. of what Joseph had. Right. Sure. So not only did they want to scheme against him, they wanted to steal from them. You'll find stealing, man, they, they wanted to strip it. It means to take away or to remove. Verse number three and four, they were mad because Joseph had something they didn't. And let me say this right here. A person who hates your guts does not want you to be happy. You said it the other night, I, last night I believe, you'll never be able to take Jesus out of my heart. But you know what those people like to do? They like to steal the joy. Man, good things happen in your life. Man, God's blessing you. God's being good to you. And God's providing. God's done awesome things. You know what those people that don't like you like to do? They don't like to see you wave your hand in church. Right. Uh, a, a personal example. Uh, if I called his name, y'all would know him. 
there's a man in my dad's church uh, man I used to come and I was saved and I know I was it's a few years back and uh, preacher you know this I, that, that man drove me nuts um, it all started as a, just something so insignificant yeah. and so small yeah. well Jordan I'd, I'd come in Sunday I'd wave my hand say hey you know do the fake smile you've been fighting all the way to church and just mad as soon as you walk in doors smile just comes on Everybody come in this morning, smiles on. No telling what happened in the car. But go and pop that smile on. That's what you're supposed to do. And I'd come in, bro, preacher, and, I, and I'd see that man. And in my head, I'm thinking, I just want to go up there, take that bald head, and I just want to punch him right in the back and watch him fall flat on his face. I was in church service thinking those things. I know how it is. I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you. Y'all don't have to be honest with me, but I'll be honest with you. Brother Jordan, that man... Every time he'd get up and shout, he'd be the loudest and preach on him. I want, I want, I want to bust him. I, I, I tear him. I was miserable. I was miserable. So you know, every time he would get up, and I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking this man, I'm, I want to bust him. He'd get up and get up there crying. I just want to thank God for blessing me. I'm like, yeah, I hear you blessing you. I'm gonna bless you. I'm gonna take you outside and wear you out. Man, he would get excited about things of God. And in my heart, I was so, I hated him. And bitterness started going in my heart because of what, the, it seemed like the worse I got mad, the better off his life got. It seemed like the more I hated him, God just kept on dumping a bucket over. You know what he did? It made me mad. And that little bitty thing of really was absolutely nothing started in my heart. And for months, Christian, I'd come to church and see that man. Y'all know if I said his name, I, I, I wanted to get him. But it seemed like, me, uh, Brother Dennis, the more I hated him, it seemed like God just turned on the spout. And every Sunday, he'd just get up. I just want to thank God for doing this this week. I want to thank God for answering I'm like, God, you know, you're supposed to be condemning him. You're supposed to be whooping on him. Why are you blessing him? You know, why, you know why God was doing that and not for me? Because I was bitter. Yeah. You know what? I couldn't take his Jesus, but I wanted him to have a rotten life. Yeah. I'm a Christian. Yeah. I was saved. Yeah. Jeff, what are you doing thinking those things? I wonder how many of us are, yeah. are guilty of that. Yeah. There's so much here. Good gracious. Hebrews 12, verse number 15. Looking diligent, diligently... Lest any man fail the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Ephesians 4.31 Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. I've heard this all my life, and I've heard Dad deal with it. A lot of times, Christian and Jordan, I didn't want to be in conversation and hear stuff what went on at church. But y'all know how it is. You want to go to the preacher's door and kind of sneak a little ear. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, somebody's on telephone they're trying to hide conversation you meet the TV so you can hear it y'all know what I mean uh, I was a sneaky kid and I want, I want to know what's going on to the preacher there's been many times I hear this you don't know what they've done to me maybe some of you like, I hope everything's good this morning maybe somebody's here this morning that's crossed you wrong owes you something and you say Jeff you just don't know what I don't have to forgive them you don't know what they've done to me I said it earlier and I'll say it again. If God can walk through the street and get beat yeah. and get his beard plucked out and get spit upon and no doubt people are going by smacking him and punching him. If God can do all that and have a nail driven in that hand, nail driven in that hand and have nails driven in his feet and still be able to muscle up the words, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. good. Open wounds, bleeding, coming from everywhere. If he can look at all of mankind and humanity and said, Father, forgive them. Where's that put you and I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they said something dirty about me. I've been there, man. I know how it is. I'll never forget preacher one Sunday morning. Uh, Y'all know them good services you get in. Yeah. Christian, I, I'll sit back down as mad as a hornet. Mad as a hornet. I, I, I still raise my hand. I still shout when I'm supposed to. I, I faked it till I could make it no more. Uh, that's the dumbest thing you can ever do as a child of God is fake it till you can make it. 
Preacher, I sat there as long as I could. The Holy Ghost come by and said, man, the choir just got down. There was a special singer. And my dad just got up and opened up the Bible. That Sunday morning, Miss Brittany, I, God said, it's now. You go to him and get it right. Lord, I'll just wait. And I, I don't even remember stepping up. I don't even remember thinking about it. I got up from my pew. Dad was sitting there just about to read his scripture. I got up and walked right in the middle of church. And that man ain't going to tell you where he sits because y'all know instantly who it is. But I walked over there, preacher, and I grabbed that big man and I told him, I said, me and you need to have a little powwow. And he, uh-oh, what's going on? Preacher, I took him back there into my mom's Sunday school class and I sat down. I said, brother, I said, I'm going to be honest with you. I said, God has been wanting me to get this right and I refuse to, but I said, I want to say I'm sorry. He said, for what? I said for hating you here we are two big men back there talking I'm sitting here and this he said had no idea here's the thing you're killing yourself from worrying and stressing and unforgiveness and bitterness and it's tearing you up and the person that you're mad at has no idea what's going on you're losing sleep you're losing victory you're losing joy you're losing happiness you're losing time off your life. Amen. Preacher, he looked at me, words from his mouth. He said, Brother Jeff, I had no idea. It hurts. It hurts to go to somebody and say, Hey, man, I'm sorry. We don't like doing that. Well, you know, if they come to me, then I'll forgive them. We're going to get there. Look at this. There's the shove in verse number 24. And they took him and cast him into a pit. Man, they, they schemed, they, uh, they stole from him, they, and then they shoved him. People don't ever want to see you succeed that's mad at you. They want to push you down. Bitter, bitterness, if not dealt with, always leads to action. If you never get that thing settled, you'll start doing things you never thought you'd start doing. So I look at verse number 20. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wander down here. Verse number 20, come now therefore and let us slay him and cast him into the pit. And here's what they were saying. We'll just say some evil beast come upon him. Yeah. Look, this, this is where I wanted to get here. Look, verse 33, they take the coat back. They dip it in blood to try to say an animal come out and got him. Look at verse 33. Here's Israel. And he knew it and said, it is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. You say, Jeff, who was what was the evil beast? It was his own family. Little did they know in verse number 20, they were telling the absolute truth. Preacher, they told, they told their dad, hey, hey, we're the evil beast. An evil beast come God. You know what they were telling Israel? We're the evil guys. We're the evil beast that divided. It wasn't a, a bear. It wasn't a lion. We're the evil beast. Let me ask you this morning. Are you the evil beast? Say, Jeff, what do I do? How do I get past that evil beast? Number one, I believe we got to remain faithful. Not one time do I find in Scripture, and if you find it, you show it to me, where Joseph complained and belly gripped. You know what he did? He accepted the fact that people hated him. And that's hard. I want to be a likable person. A preacher, I've come to find out real quick. Not everybody's going to like you. My dad said this, and man, it has struck in my heart, and I have learned so much from this one thought. If everybody likes you, there's a problem with you. I'm going to say that again. If everybody likes you, there's a problem with you. Yeah. Amen. I've learned that really, 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 really hard in my ministry. You want people to like you, you want people to back you, but not everybody's going to like you. Accept it. Move on. Remain faithful. Yes. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse number 14. Yes. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Yes. Man, he was, he, he accepted the pit. Look, turn with me to Genesis 39. I'm winding down. Verse number 2, we all know this. Genesis 39 verse number 2, and the Bible says, And the Lord was with Joseph. Jeff, how do I get past the evil beast? You got to remain faithful. Then you got to remember the favor. 
God's favor does not change based on people's opinions of you. God's favor does not change based on somebody's opinion of you. If you'll instill that in your heart, that no matter what somebody says to you about you, God's favor doesn't change on you. He said he'll be the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord, I change not. When somebody hates you, guess what? God's still for you. All the world could turn against you, but what, guess what, Brother Jordan? God's still for me. You know what kept Joseph going on? He remembered the favor of God. Genesis 39, verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Hold up, Jeff. I thought, I thought uh, Joseph was being hated and got, got stolen from. Does it change the favor of God? It doesn't matter what somebody does to you. It doesn't matter what somebody says about you. God's favor does not change. You know how pastors last in the ministry for so long? They remember God's favor doesn't change. People will change. Times will change. Things will change. But God will never change. His favor is always there. Judges 1 verse 22. And the house of Joseph, they also went up against Bethel. And the Lord was with him. Even from his own family hating him. They got that thing right. See this and I'm finished this morning. Look, turn to Genesis chapter number 45. We find where, uh, y'all know the story. I'm not telling you something new this morning. How to get past the evil beast. You got to remain faithful. You got to remember the favor. But I want you to see this. You got to restore forgiveness. Here is something we don't like to do. You say, Jeff, Joseph did not have to apologize. And he didn't. Joseph did nothing wrong. Joseph was just doing what he father, his father asked him to. Notice Genesis 45. So we, we, they're fine. There's a, there's a famine in, the, in his dad's country, in Israel's country. And so guess what? They needed a bread. They, where'd they get it from? They come right to Egypt. And here they find Joseph. Man, has done went from the pit to the palace. He's done raised up. And it's amazing when people hate you, it blows my mind. Preacher, when I hear people hate me and they, they see me, it seems like my life is more successful yeah. when people start hating me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me say this. You never know when you're going to need somebody. Yeah. Sure. Look there in verse number 5. Here comes his brothers to Egypt. Genesis 45 verse 5. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither for God did send me before you to preserve life. Verse number 8. So now is not that you sent me hither, but God. Jordan, my mind, there's, I, I wrote right here beside this one, preach. This is a good point right here. Notice this. Them stealing of the coat was God. Them pushing him to a pit was God. Them throwing him in prison, guess what? It was God. The favor didn't change. People's opinion didn't change God's favor. Everywhere Joseph went. Now look with me in verse number 15. Notice this right here. You, if you find this, you let me know. Not one time do I find where this brother said, I'm sorry. The same people that lied on him. The same people that done Joseph wrong. This, this verse 15 really swept me off my feet. Moreover... He kissed, notice this right here. Y'all remember in Genesis 37, the them, the us's, the they's, the whole family. Look here, I circled the word all. Moreover, he kissed all his brethren and wept upon them. And after that, his brethren talked with him. Look at that word, and after that. Fellowship was never restored until Joseph made the first move there's so many people this morning that live with hatred in their heart and bitterness in their heart over what somebody's done to them said to them you know what I've learned in my life and as, as, as a I was probably 19, 20 years old preacher I've learned that you gotta let stuff go 
I'm going to bring something super spiritual into the church this morning. Anybody ever seen Frozen beside me? Anybody be honest with me? Raise your hands. Please don't leave me alone right here. I did a whole sermon series about four weeks to my teenagers on Frozen. There ain't nothing spiritual. I look at movies. Man, preaching just comes alive. I, look, I, look, I can look at that Kleenex box and something will just come alive. <laughs> Get this right here. This, this is super spiritual. I'm telling you. Man, that, that movie Frozen, that one, I, I, I get the names messed up. The one girl had the power to free stuff. You know what happened? Everything she started touching started becoming cold and frozen just like her. So you know what happened? She ended up, Brother Christian, with a cold heart. Brother Jordan, her cold heart made her made action. Some of y'all are going to really like this. I'm telling you, this is so spiritual. This is good stuff. <laughs> Y'all be watching the Lion King a whole lot more different now. <laughs> Preacher, that girl that had the, everything she touched, you know what she did? She isolated herself on top of a mountain. Yeah. You know what I find with people with cold heart and unforgiveness? They want to be isolated. Yeah. It's, it's about to get a whole lot more spiritual. Watch this. She built a place that nobody else was allowed into. Yeah. Why? Because she had a cold heart. Yeah. She done damage back home. So you know what she said the problem? I'm the problem. I'm going to move. I'm going to get away from it. But you know what? The problem didn't change. Right. It only got worse. Right. You find where her sister and that uh, elk and that snowman. Man they're going up the mountain. And all of a sudden this big old uh, snowman guy comes out. And he's, he's trying to kill him. Notice this right here. When she had a cold heart. She created something that was trying to kill the very people trying to help her. You know what somebody with unforgiveness and bitterness in their heart will do? They will create things trying to kill people and hurt people. She was trying to hurt her very own sister. Her sister was coming out to help her because she loved her. And saw something in her. She was her sister. Man, that's, that's who she's supposed to be. I told you this is spiritual. Man, this is good stuff. She created things to try to kill the very person coming to help her. Let me say this, church. If you've got things in your heart, it's amazing what you'll do with bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart. There's things I've done, and I've asked God to forgive me. There's things I've done. There's things I've said. Brother Jordan, when I was mad, when I was bitter, and I knew better, I know better, done things, said things I'll never be able to take back because in the moment, I was mad. And man, you, you find that snow monster, man, he's trying to do everything, and she isolates herself completely off the map and hurts the very people. You know, in the, in the movie, they needed her. It's amazing to me that if, man, you find Olaf, I preached on him. He's probably my, my favorite character. Man, every, his whole life could be blown apart. His head be over there, his feet be over there. But you know what? His, I preach that as everything just comes right back together. You'll find that elk or moose or whatever it is, it eats his nose and guess what? He just grabs another one sticks it in. We need some church members like that. Their lives get blown apart. You know what they do? Just come right back together and be faithful. Yeah. There's a lot of spirituality in that, I know. But with a cold heart, with bitterness and unforgiveness in your heart, you will do things. Verse 15, Moreover, he kissed all of his brethren and wept on them in these two words, three words, and after that. Not one time you find where his brother said, I'm sorry. But you know what? That didn't bother Joseph. He said, I'll be the first one. I'll be the first one. You saw him out being the one. Let me ask you this this morning. Would you be the first to tell somebody or go to somebody and say, hey, I'm sorry? You want to see God move? You want to see God do some big things here? It doesn't matter what they've done. You take the first step. You reach out first. Jeff, you don't, just like man up there on the mountain, that snow monster, he's, you don't, Jeff, I'm trying to help him. They just keep hurting me. I'm, 
Keep trying. Keep going. Do not let unforgiveness go. You make the first move. His whole family was saved from a famine and didn't die because he made the first move. Are you willing to take the first step? Father, we love you. Lord, I, I know it's that's some tough words there. Lord, I had to experience that. Lord, I, I sensed you moving last night. Lord, I sent you here this morning. Lord, there's no absolute telling, God, what you could do here in Kentucky. Lord, if we would be the first to move out. Apologize to God. Apologize to those people. Lord, I no doubt we all got somebody in our hearts. Lord, that we've done something, said something. Lord, help us. God, to be wise enough and strong enough. God, to take that first step. And get things right with you. Lord, I prayed for the worship service. God, if somebody needs to move. Lord, you'll just get so thick in here. God, just get real this morning. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.